This program is brought to you by Emory University. Conservators often uncover clues about an object's composition and construction during the process of treatment. The conservation treatment of this Kanaga mask began as an effort to stabilize the object in preparation for exhibition, and it resulted in the rearrangement of some elements to better align with what the object's original appearance may have been. Not much information is known about the object's collection history prior to its arrival at the museum as a gift in 1982. However, the mask probably dates to the mid-20th century. Kanaga masks are made by the Dogon people of Mali, Africa. They are worn during Dhamma ceremonies to honor a recently deceased family member and to help transport the soul of the deceased away from the village. Dancers in this ceremony swing the mask around in wide circles and dip down so the mask hits or brushes the ground. The top edges of the mask in the Carlos Museum collection are worn, which may be evidence of this practice. This wooden object is just one component of the mask ensemble that also includes garments and accessories. And the mask ensemble is just one element of the masquerade, which can include other mask, music, and performance. When in use, Kanaga masks have dyed plant fibers positioned around the face and a woven plant fiber mat attached to the back. Unfortunately, these more ephemeral elements have not survived along with the wooden mask in the museum's collection. Here you can see the front and back of the mask before treatment. The main portion of the mask, including the carved face and the tall vertical element, is carved from one piece of wood. Attached are two cross pieces with two additional end pieces projecting at the ends. The majority of the mask is painted with black and white pigment. On the back of the mask is a plant fiber net that would cover the back of the wearer's head. Note that prior to treatment, the cross pieces are lashed to the front of the mask, on top of the vertical element, and the end pieces are all pointing upward. The mask's main condition problem involved the attachment of the cross pieces to the vertical element. The cords lashing the cross pieces in place were loose, making the cross pieces unstable and mobile. Research and consultation with curator of African art, Amanda Hellman, helped confirm that the cross pieces were not meant to move when danced. Therefore, the cords provided inadequate support for the object. In addition, they appeared different than other cords present on the mask. Most of the end pieces are lashed to the cross pieces with strips of furry animal hide. Thick black pigment partially covers over the hide cords, which provides evidence that these may be the original lashings, or at least that they were applied before the thick black paint. In contrast, the upper cross piece was lashed with a cotton string and the lower cross piece with a jute-like twine. Both of these cords were painted a matte blue-black color only on the front. Based on these inconsistencies, the cords were likely not original to the mask. The cotton and jute lashings could have been applied during a previous restoration effort, which may have occurred before or after the object left its native context in Mali. However, since they did not provide adequate support for the cross pieces and were not aesthetically congruent with the other lashings, they were removed from the object. They were saved in the museum file in case they are needed for future research or study. An interesting finding was discovered when the lashings were removed and the wooden pieces were separated. Here you can see the front of the vertical element that was previously covered by the cross pieces. It is painted with black pigment and has impressions from previous hide lashings with hair stuck in the pigment. You may also notice that the black pigment has been abraded, likely as a result of the mobility of the cross pieces. The pigment is lighter in color and powdering in some areas, so during treatment it was consolidated with an adhesive to prevent further paint loss. The most exciting discovery came when viewing the back unpainted sides of the vertical element and cross pieces. Here, paint is dripped through the lashing holes and these marks match up on adjacent pieces. In these images, you can see that the large drips correspond like a mirror image. This feature provided evidence that the cross pieces were originally attached in a different orientation. 
with the unpainted sides together and the ends of the lower cross piece pointing down. Since the mask would have been seen from both the front and back during use, it makes sense that the unpainted sides would match up together and the front and back surfaces would be painted. The cross pieces were then reattached in this alternate orientation. You can see that they are now lashed to the back of the vertical element with the lower end pieces facing down. The mask now resembles what is likely its original configuration. The new lashing cords were made from folded Tyvek covered with Japanese tissue that was painted to match the dark paint-covered hide. Tyvek was chosen for its strength and dimension, while the painted tissue was used for its surface and texture. These materials were chosen, as opposed to say hide or leather, because they can be easily distinguished from original materials upon close examination, but they are not visually distracting to the viewer. They are also known to have good aging properties and were able to hold the cross pieces stable and secure. Additional condition issues were located on the upper cross piece. Unlike the other end pieces, lashed with furry hide strips, the one on the upper proper left side is held with a plant fiber cord. Similarly, on the other side of the cross piece, the wood is split and held with a different type of plant fiber cord. In order to take a closer look at the fibers, samples were taken of all of the plant fiber cords on the mask and were viewed using a transmitted light microscope. The cord lashing on the end piece is two-ply, and it appears similar to the two-ply cord net on the back of the mask. The cord repair may have occurred in the native context, as these objects were used and repaired as needed, or it may have been the work of a later restorer who used a piece of cord taken from the back netting. Even though this cord is broken, it continues to function, holding the wooden pieces stable. For this reason, and because the cord appears similar to other material on the mask, it was left in place. The broken areas were repaired to prevent further fraying and damage and to improve their appearance. Threads of toned Japanese tissue were applied along the groove between the plies to help retwist the frayed ends. Then a cone of tissue was gathered around the tip of the cord and adhered into the wooden hole to give the appearance of an unbroken cord. The cord around the split wood area, however, appears different. It is three ply and appears more similar to the jute twine that was removed from the lower cross piece of the mask. In addition, this area was unstable. The cord was loose and did not adequately hold the split together. Therefore, the cord was removed and the wood split was repaired with an adhesive. Once all of the more structural repairs were completed, some of the more minor aesthetic concerns began to stand out. The loss in the proper right ear area is relatively small, but this break in the outer silhouette of the mask would be particularly noticeable when the mask is viewed upright on the wall. In order to compensate for this missing area, a small fill was shaped to fit and painted to match the surrounding wood. You may also notice some areas of a braided paint down the center front of the mask. A reversible method of covering and toning these areas was discussed between the curator and conservator, but in the end, these areas were left untoned as they are likely signs of use and were not deemed too visually distracting. Finally, this is how the mask looks after treatment. The cross pieces are now held more securely and in the orientation in which they were intended. The mask still retains what is likely evidence of age, wear, and use, yet it appears complete, stable, and respectfully well cared for. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.